Have you ever wanted a podcast that did it all? Sports, politics, world events. Well, you have come to the right place because you are listening to CNC Talks. Hello, I'm Colin. And I'm Charlie. And welcome to the CNC Talks podcast. This is episode 14 of season two. Just a reminder, as you do every week, we release every Wednesday and we talk about politics, world events, and sports. At the time of taping this, it is currently Monday, April 24th, 2023, at about 9 p.m. Pacific time. And we actually have a packed show this week, a really, really, really busy news week. Um, The Twitter debacle is continuing. Um, We've got Fox's defamation trial settling um the fulton county uh district attorney says that indictments might come down pretty soon the nfl draft is about to start the nba playoffs uh the nhl playoffs both in full swing and a whole lot more but let's start with charlie what has got to be the biggest story in media in a long long time tucker carlson has in one way or another, left Fox News. Um, the he hosted the second highest rated show on cable television, uh, Tucker Carlson Tonight, um, in the 8 p.m. primetime hour. Um, Fox News, of course, the highest rated channel on cable. Tucker often talked about things such as election, fake election fraud, or the Great Replacement theory, a racist theory uh, that has been widely debunked, but also used often to justify mass shootings, as it did with the Buffalo shooting last year. It's unclear exactly why Carlson was fired, but uh, Charlie, what are your thoughts? It is interesting to see. Of course, he does control a very important show on Fox News. This also comes at the same time that Don Lemon, a popular host on CNN, was also fired. And this is interesting, considering that Over the last few years, large networks of news have really seen a drop in views as independent news sources like those on Twitter, if we can call those news sources, have seen a rise in popularity. So it is interesting to see as news sources become less popular that these popular hosts are beginning to be jettisoned. Yeah, and you make it you make some interesting points. But Fox News's ratings, actually, especially Tucker Carlson's, remain very, very high and something that Fox News has done a great job of is telling their viewers that Fox News is really the only source that they could trust. And Tucker Carlson did that especially. And you have to wonder, what's his audience going to do now? Are they going to follow him to wherever he goes next? Or are they going to stick with Fox News? And you might think that they would stick with Tucker just given how popular he is on the right, um, one of the biggest figures on the right, frankly. Um, But also, Fox News primetime holds a lot of power, so his influence could lessen significantly. I mean, look at what happened to Bill O'Reilly and Megyn Kelly when they lost their Fox News shows. They became nobodies, frankly. But I do think that this is good news, even if Tucker does go and do something else, because they'll get these lies off of basic cable packages, right? Every um, every American that has cable is paying Fox News a significant fee, even if they don't watch them. So it'll take them off of basic, take those lies off of basic cable packages. Also mean like hotels, you probably won't see them on in hotel hotel lobbies. You probably, you definitely won't see it on, on military bases anymore. So that those are and some that is- definitely good effects. And that is certainly significant, considering the military does tend to be slightly right of center. Definitely. Um, Speaking of Fox, their defamation lawsuit has finally been settled with Dominion Voting Systems. And I actually do believe that might be one of the reasons that Tucker Carlson has been in some way removed from the company, because I do believe that Fox is concerned that his shenanigans, shall I say, involving 2020, uh, completely lying about the 2020 election may cause Fox to come under fire with even more lawsuits in the future. So I, I do see this as possibly a defensive move by Fox to try to avoid more lawsuits in the future. 
Yeah, I also think that there could just be something else going on behind the scenes because there's lots of anchors that are responsible. Tucker Carlson actually was not one of the biggest anchors spreading the lies about Dominion. He definitely spread them, but not nearly as much as anchors such as Maria Bartiromo or Janine Pirro. Um, So there could be something else going on. But yeah, this trial settled, which is a really, really big deal. Fox obviously having to pay Dominion significant money, $787.5 million, and they get spared having to go to trial, which is probably very good for them because it will stop a lot of really embarrassing things from coming out about that network. Yeah, of course, the several lies that they've made over the course of since the 2020 election, um, of course, there would, those revealing details would have come out However, they weren't. Some were already stated, like the fact that they know that they were lying to their audience. But a lot of damage could have been done, and it is unfortunate to see that Dominion has decided to settle this case. Yeah, and Charlie, you make an interesting point there because, yes, it has come out that they've lied to their audience. But I would say that most Fox News viewers just don't know that um, because – they really only watch Fox News and Fox News hasn't told them that it would be much harder to keep the your audience from hearing that, though, if there was a high profile trial that actually went on. That, of course, did not happen. Yeah, it didn't. And I believe that is unfortunate. And I do believe that Fox did get lucky here. They are under some other lawsuits. So we'll see what ends up coming out with those as well. Interestingly enough. Yeah, um, Smartmatics, of course, suing them for even more than Dominion. And what I think was interesting, right, is especially with Dominion's case, we'll see about Smartmatics, but Dominion's case seemed to be pretty rock solid. They had a lot of evidence of def- defamation. What they maybe did not have evidence of is the $1.6 billion figure. That seems to be highly inflated. So I have to wonder if it was just a technique to get Fox News to settle with them for more money than they otherwise could have gotten just so that Fox could avoid a trial. And if that what is the case, then that worked out really, really well for Dominion. Yeah, that that could be. And that is that is interesting. Um, let's move on now to more craziness going on with Twitter. Um, there's been a debate over the subscription service Twitter Blue, as well as the blue check marks. Can we, little, can we get a little bit more onto exactly what those are, what they do, and why there's a controversy around them? Yeah, okay, so the original point of the blue check mark on Twitter was to stop high-profile people from being impersonated, right? That was the entire point, so that people that actually have some amount of influence, fairly or not, th- that people could know that this was actually them right so then elon musk comes along and decides to make it just based on subscription and now he's removed all of the old check marks um because he wants to get the celebrities to buy twitter blue as well as other people so that maybe they can look like celebrities the problem is that no one including celebrities but no one will actually spend the eight dollars to buy it because it's useless all that the check mark signifies is I have $8, not I'm actually notable in any way. So Elon just decided to give a bunch of these people Twitter blue. And there's a a couple possible reasons. First, it could imply that these people are endorsing the product, um, which they're not. And that seems like uh, (laughs) false advertising in some ways. Um, Also could be to stop these uh, to stop people from using these bots that will block all uh, Twitter Blue subscribers because there's a lot of people that have been using those that incentivize people to not use them so that they can still actually see content from celebrities who were given Twitter Blue even though they do not want Twitter Blue. So really is a chaotic mess, as is a lot of Elon stuff, and we'll be talking about another one of those later on in the show. And we have some news from Texas now. A bill has moved through part of the legislature. It needs to go through, I believe, the House. I believe it passed the Senate and now has moved on to the House. Correct. Where demanding that in public schools, the Ten Commandments be shown in a clear, visible location in which they can be read. So, so much for church separation of church and state, I guess. 
Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see once this bill does get passed, because it almost certainly will get passed, what the courts have to say about it, even though it is pretty clearly unconstitutional. Um, the courts have done some very interesting things. Uh, I mean, we can just we can talk about the abortion ruling with the uh, Pristone pill, which actually was at least temporarily allowed by the Supreme Court to be used um, overturning the ruling of this district court judge in Texas. Um, but let's also talk about Fulton County, Georgia. Fonnie Willis, the district attorney there, obviously investigating Trump as well as many others for election interference in the 2020 election. There could be charges there, according to Fonnie Willis's office, uh, at some point over the summer, likely between July 11th and September 1st. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, and of um, course, as soon as we get more details on it, we will talk about it on the next episode after that. Yeah, um, Trump's already, of course, been indicted in New York. We'll see if he gets indicted in Georgia. There's also, of course, the federal investigations into him by special counsel Jack Smith. Of course, he's facing a couple of lawsuits, including this defamation lawsuit by Eugene Carroll that's starting this week. So not a great time to be Donald Trump if there ever was a good time to be Donald Trump. Well, when his tax returns weren't exposed and he wasn't hated by half of the country, I would say that would be a fairly good time because he had a bunch of money. Uh, maybe he had a bunch of money. Yeah, well, okay, p put that in air quotes. Yeah, yeah, sure, fair enough. And um, in U.S. government, a national story now, uh, the talks between McCarthy and the Republicans and Biden have continued over the debt ceiling, which, of course, continues to be a large problem, because if the U.S. does not get this done soon, we may have to default on our debts. McCarthy, this uh, current House Speaker has made a plan that he has shown to the House, I believe, but he does need to get backing from his own party. Of course, there's those far-right Republicans who might want to try to prevent this because they do not believe the bill goes far enough in restricting spending, which is Republicans' main goal in this current crisis. And, Charlie, real quick before we go further on this topic, because there's so much that could be said, but the debt ceiling is, has been raised so many times. and the Republicans have rarely had any problem with it. They definitely didn't have a problem with raising it under Trump. But now they want to cut spending under Biden. And let's be clear where they want to cut spending. They want to uh, they want one of the big areas is restricting health care for veterans. I mean. Wow. But we love our military. We love our military. Yeah, sure. And. I mean, these things don't have chances. I mean, it's unclear if they'll even manage to pass the House, but they're not passing a Democratic-led Senate, and they're definitely, definitely not getting signed by Biden, so it's unclear where the talks go from here, and there's a ticking clock, and it's ticking pretty fast. The interesting thing on the political side of this is I could see that if the Republicans do pass it to the House, and it fails, and the debt ceiling isn't raised, the Republicans could definitely use the argument, well, see, we tried to get something done, but the Democrats wouldn't let us do it, which would yeah, be I'm a huge sure political victory Yeah, I'm not sure people will them. actually buy that argument, though. Well, people have bought stupider things before. That's true. They've bought Trump's NFTs. All right, let's move on to world events now. And happy Earth Day to everyone. Yeah, and... But we take this opportunity as it's Earth Day. Since we don't get to talk about climate very often on this show or climate change. Uh, but I think since it's Earth Day, it's important. It's a very important topic. So, Charlie, let's just get your quick thoughts on where things stand right now with climate. It is still, of course, a massive concern. More needs to be done to be invested into clean energy. Because this isn't just about people complaining about politics. This is about saving our planet and saving ourselves from completely destroying the entire planet in which we live on. This is not, this shouldn't be a partisan issue, and I will never understand why it is. We need to pass legislation and get things done. Yeah, that is well said. And I mean, we are already on this planet right now. We are seeing the effects of climate change, right? I mean, just take where we live, just take Seattle. A, a couple years ago, 
we had three straight days of like 109 degrees. That is definitely not normal for the Pacific Northwest. And we've saw uh, just this past year smoke for basically the entirety of September and October, smoke from wildfires just all over the area. We're seeing more hurricanes than, than ever, more just complete natural disasters than ever before. And it is it is only going to get worse from here unless we do something about it. And Charlie, this is not just an issue about saving the uh, the planet from climate disaster. There are economic impacts if we don't do something. And while it may cost us somewhat in the short term in uh, to do something about climate, in the long term, if we do nothing, then it will be awful for the economy, not to mention the planet as a whole. That is true. Speaking of climate change and not assisting in it, SpaceX ro- launched their rocket, their Starship rocket, on Friday with a successful launch pad launch before in, a few minutes into the launch it began to spin before exploding. What are your thoughts on this, Colin? Sorry, I thought you meant uh, rapid unscheduled disassembly, Charlie. That is what they have claimed happened. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if we consider this a success or not. Uh, SpaceX is definitely taking the victory lap. Um, That rocket seems to be very, uh, seems to resemble um, all of Elon's um, business ventures recently, is that the they all have just completely gone up in flames. Um, so, I, I don't know. Space, SpaceX confuses me. I think it is a success for them, considering this is the furthest that they have ever gotten. But I do think it is, in, in some ways, a failure, considering it's never good when the thing you spent a lot of time building explodes. Yeah, so but the, the, I do they think eventually this is plan a to carry humans on this, am I correct? Uh, they they do plan to. This is the this is the rocket that is planned to be used for the moon landings. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not going on that ever. No. Well, we of course so, will see how this develops. They do have two more years to figure it out before we do put humans in it. So we shall see if we are going to be successful or if we'll be down a few humans. Or if it will be Challenger 2.0. And let's hope not. Let's hope not because. But I was not I was not alive during the challenge during what happened with Challenger. And frankly, I'm glad because that just was what a devastating story. And now to Sudan in yet another devastating story, that country is on the brink of a civil war at the moment between fighting between a paramilitary organization and the country's main army has sparked in Sudan, as well as some other large cities, forcing major countries such as the U.S. to begin pulling out its diplomats and citizens. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, the U.S. I believe successfully did pull out their diplomats. Correct? They did successfully pull out their diplomats. That is correct. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. So let's move on to sports now. But first, reminded this is the CNC Talks podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And we're going to start with Charlie. The NFL draft just at when this episode gets released, we will be T minus thirty six out thirty five hours, I believe, actually till the draft so we're really closing in on it and it it seems to me right now like there have been few drafts with as much uncertainty in recent years as this one and so much talent as well so much talent particularly at the quarterback decision so charlie and i we are going to do a mock draft one through ten, and how we'll do it, we'll each do our one pick, then our two pick, and and so on. Um, start Charlie with with number one. Um, who do you have as your number one overall pick, which currently goes to the Panthers? Unlikely that they're going to trade that. I am going with the rather default uh, option here. I will take Bryce Young to the Panthers. And yeah, Bryce Young does definitely seem like the obvious choice. There were some thoughts that maybe it could be C.J. Stroud, but right now I really like Bryce Young at number one overall. All right, who do you have at number two, Colin? So this is the Texans pick. Um, 
been this has actually been really interesting recently because it's been unclear what direction the Texans wanted to go. Most people think a quarterback, though there's some reason to think in recent weeks that they might want an edge rusher. Um, I don't see it. So I am going to have them taking a quarterback. I think I, I think that they're going to pick Will Levis. I'm going to have to agree with you there. I also have Will Levis to the Texans. Really? I thought that that was a surprise pick, but apparently not. No, I I think that if they were to take C.J. Stroud, I don't think he would perform very well in that offense. Knowing the Texans, they'll probably mess up well, um, Sorry, they'll probably mess up Levis's development anyway and have to pick up another quarterback next year. That's true. And also, so right, prayers up for the Indianapolis Colts right now. They really, really, really wanted a good quarterback. They are going to get, at best, the third best quarterback in the draft um, at with the fourth pick. Um, but who are the Cardinals taking if the Cardinals even have that pick? Yeah, uh, I'll let you I'll let you go first on this one. I have heard that they're thinking of shopping that pick around. I think the um, I believe Tennessee is interested in that one. Definitely. I have Tennessee trading up with Arizona, probably taking someone maybe like Buda Baker or someone like um, Hopkins, trading for, who trading. I know wants out as well. Yeah. For that pick, and they would probably swap picks. And I have them taking C.J. Stroud at three. And I thought that I was going to be the sneaky one here and go with that trade. That trade just feels like a good fit for both of those teams. I also have Tennessee trading up. And yeah, so apparently we have the same top three in our mock draft. Oh, really? This is apparently really boring because we have no difference of opinion whatsoever. CJ Stroud got going to Tennessee and the shocker, I guess. This was not going as planned. All right. Number four, I imagine we're thinking the same thing on this. Yeah, you go you're going first on this one. Yeah, I got I got Anthony Richardson here. To the Colts? To the Colts, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that they're gonna trade that pick. And and I think that they actually really like Anthony Richardson. I definitely do too. I think it's yes, just a I, pretty good. I agree fit. with you. I agree with you. I think Anthony Richardson first four picks are all gonna be quarterbacks. Yeah, all right. I think it's yeah, so next is Seattle. A lot of questions about what Seattle was going to do. Uh, Jalen Carter was kind of the consensus. Um, I I personally, as a Seahawks fan, I hope that they don't take Carter. There's just so many, so many red flags. The talent is undeniable, arguably the most talented player in the draft, but so many red flags. I also, though, I don't, I think Pete Carroll cares a lot about culture, and I think that that is going to prevent him from going with uh, Jalen Carter. I also think he really likes Will Anderson. Give me Will Anderson to the Seahawks at number five. I'm going to agree with you as well on that one. I think he would be a good fit in that defense, and I think that pick makes sense. Okay, so what are the odds that we have the same 10 now that we have the same first, the same front uh, five? I'm st- imagining still pretty rare. So who who's up next? That would be the Detroit Lions who got that pick from the Rams. Um, who do you have going six overall to the Lions, or do they trade that pick? I think the Lions are keeping that pick, and I think they are going to form an unstoppable offense uh, defensive line because I think they're taking Jalen Carter. Sigh, because that's exactly my thought, too. Oh, uh, no. Carter, Jalen Carter, number six to the Lions. I don't see Carter falling lower than that, even though he maybe should. I have, he is, he is maybe the most intriguing person in the draft because he has such potential, but also so many reasons to think that there just might be nothing. I okay, think that, pick seven is the Raiders, and yeah. this is the one that you're going to have to go out, go with. Who do you have at number seven of the Raiders? I swear if you give me the same guy. Um, 
Raiders, I feel like they want someone on defense. Um, I Uh-oh. think it's between Devon Witherspoon and Christian Gonzalez. I got Witherspoon here. Oh, no. I got Witherspoon as well. Just pick Gonzalez. No, I'm taking Witherspoon. It makes more sense as it makes more sense as a draft as a draft pick. Yeah, no, it it does, it does at number seven. Right. Um, Please tell me you got the something Atlanta different. Atlanta Falcons, here. and I'll let you go here. Number eight to the Falcons. I think. I mean, they have AJ Terrell on that defense. Don't say it, Charlie. They need someone. They need someone to support him. Give me. Uh, they need someone else on that defense, especially. Down low, give me Tyree Wilson. We finally have a different pick. Yes! I think they're going to go on the complete opposite side of the ball. think that they're going to go for a running back. Give me Bijan Robinson. Robinson. Give me Bijan Robinson. Interestingly enough, At I eight. have him going to the next pick. I have Bijan Robinson number nine to the Bears. Robinson, Robinson to the Bears. Um, Bears, I think want O line. Bears, I gonna, I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna, I think that they're gonna pick Paris Johnson Jr. at number nine. Paris Johnson Jr. to the Bears. Finally for the Eagles, this is difficult because they're stacked. They are now, the two things. The two things that they don't need. They don't need O line. And they don't need D-line. Look at what they have. Look at what's available. Um, I can't pronounce his, at the second half of his last game. Give me Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's, a, it's an interesting pick. I think, actually, though, they are going to go D-line. Tenth pick of the draft. And here's the thing about this guy. He could go top two or top three. but. I have Tyree Wilson going 10 to the Philadelphia Eagles. See, my only concern with that is they already have a really big D-line, and they already have some guys that really haven't gotten too much playing time. They, I think they drafted someone in the first round last year that was a defensive lineman. Yeah, that's true, but they also they, they have another pick in the first round, remember? That is true, they do. Right, two first round picks for the Eagles. Um I think I think that they'll be fine in terms of that. Um not worried there. All right. Let's move on now to you want to do the NBA playoffs first? Just a sec. Do the Broncos have a first round pick? I believe that they don't. I thought that they they got Miami's pick, not the one not the not the one they had to forfeit, the one that came from the 49ers, which came from somewhere else. Uh, or is that a second I am currently pick? checking. When's the Broncos' no, they don't. pick? They don't. What? Uh, they, they don't. Oh, Denver wait, 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 no... wait, wait, wait. It's, it's, it's with the Saints now, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they traded it. Yeah, they traded it to the Saints. Um, not interesting. Um. All right, uh, let's talk about Aaron Rodgers real quick. All right, yeah, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets finally get that deal done. He is now headed finally to New York. But what does this do for both of these teams? I feel like the Packers still aren't going to be great, and I feel like the Jets are still going to get bounced in the first round. Yeah, so this is actually why I was asking about the Broncos, because they've got to feel so stupid, because they wanted Rodgers, right? Instead, yep. instead they got Wilson. Rodgers goes to the Jets for half of Wilson's price. Um, now, there's an argument to be made that the Jets overpaid for, for Aaron Rodgers, but uh, what choice did they have? Um, it is also fair to say that the Denver Broncos overpaid for Russell Wilson. Well, certainly. That was... By the way, Denver's earliest draft pick that they have is, in the third round, it's pick 67 from Indianapolis. Weren't they supposed to be good or something? Yeah, they were supposed to win their division and dethrone the Chiefs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, how's that going? 
don't worry, Denver. We still like you, but we're going to obliterate your hockey team. Uh, we're taping this, by the way, in the middle of that game four between the Kraken and the Avalanche. We'll it's get to still that two to two. a little later. That game is also tied to two to two now. Avalanche came back and tied it in a game that's looking very similar to game two of this series. Um, hopefully the Kraken can have a bit of a better result. Um, yeah, let's talk about the NBA playoffs now. Charlie, we mentioned last week how we were hoping that these playoffs were a bit better than last year's NBA playoffs. Um, and they're living up, oh they're living up my, the yes, they are. Which So we're going to go series by series here. Which one do you want to start with? I'll let you choose. Let's start with the only one that is currently over, because Philadelphia destroyed Brooklyn. <laughs> and, yeah, no, that would... That that is the exception to the rule about goods about a good NBA playoffs so far. Um but I feel like this was expected. Brooklyn, if they had been playing with their current roster all season, wouldn't even be a play in team, I don't think. So they would have made the plan. I don't think they would have gotten anywhere though. Well, sure, maybe. But Okay. So now let's let's take let's take okay. this conference by I'm conference going Embiid down. Real quick though. I'm uh, real all quick, right, I'm worried ahead. about Embiid going forward. And that is? His injury. We'll see if he's available for that series against, well, whoever it's against. We'll um, see. Actually, let's talk about that series now, the Boston-Atlanta. Um, Boston, correct me if I'm mistaken, they have a 3-1 to one lead in that series. You are correct. Um, after Atlanta did manage to take a game and I think, I think look pretty impressive while doing it. So are the Celtics in trouble then against Philadelphia? Uh, no. I I mean, it, it that will be a great second round series, assuming that that's what we get, and I think it is. That will that will and be a tremendous series. I think we could. I think that one could go the distance. Looking at the rest of the East, are the Knicks about to make the Eastern Conference Finals? So. But let's start with that series against Cleveland. Um, I thought that the Knicks would win this series. I didn't think that they would look this good doing it. What the Knicks are doing against the against a good Cavaliers team is really, really impressive. They have looked amazing so far. Yeah, and this is a huge step forward for that organization. Um, Jalen Brunson, I cannot say enough good things about that player. Throw that man a statue. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then in the other series in the East, um, we're taping this about in two hours after, um, Jimmy Butler went off for 56 points, I believe the fourth highest scoring game in the playoffs ever. Um, just an absolutely wild game for Butler against a healthy Bucks team. The eight, the eight seed Heat, Charlie, they have a three to one lead on the Milwaukee Bucks. Series is going back to Milwaukee. I don't want to say that Milwaukee can't win that series, but who knows? It, it's been a tremendous series so far. And then let's look at the West. The Timberwolves avoid elimination by winning, I believe it was yesterday. Yeah, uh, yesterday as of taping this. And uh, I'd say there's a pretty good chance that they'll be eliminated by the time that this episode reaches this audience's ears. I would say that's also true of the Cavaliers as well. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, yeah. No, 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 no. Then, they they don't they play Wednesday. They play Wednesday night. Ah, yeah. And yeah. then looking at looking at the other series, Suns and Clippers. Has that one gone the way you thought it would? The Suns are a very, very good team, right? Suns are a very good team. I have them winning the finals. On the other hand, if the Los Angeles Clippers were healthy. They would probably be winning this series. While that is very, while the, that is while the very Suns have a three true. to one lead, the Suns have a three to one lead, but it, every game has been really close 
Paul George has been out all of them. Kawhi Leonard's been out a couple games. Just bad, bad luck for the for the Clippers uh, as per usual, but still some great games in that series. Unfortunate for the Clippers, but the Suns, Suns look like they could be on their way to a to a title. And Grizzlies Lakers, how about that series? That series, that series is really heating up. At the end of the third quarter, at the time of taping this, the Grizzlies are up two, with the Lakers up two to one in the series. Yeah, and that's and it's close. Um, a great series. Um, let's. I don't. I don't know if I want to do it, but let's let's talk about Dylan Brooks. It it needs to be done. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um. The Memphis Grizzlies should move on from Dylan Brooks. Um, let's be let's be clear with that. Um, Dylan Brooks, Dylan Brooks wants to be Draymond Green so badly. The problem is that he's Draymond without the talent, so he's just a trash talker, and which really just makes him a complete jerk. Um, and he can't take trash talk. That's why he keeps getting in fights. Um, so it's it's time to move on from him. Um. He is he's not the only reason, but he's part of the reason why the Memphis Grizzlies are the most hated team in the NBA right now. It's because they as a whole as a team, they talk trash, but they have so far not done a thing to back it up and they cannot take it. So And let's talk about what is possibly the best series in the NBA playoffs right now. The Warriors and the Kings. Warriors are giving me a heart attack. Can I just say that? By the way, may I add the fact that the NBA admitted that they blew the game. Okay, but let's be let's be fair. Draymond probably shouldn't have been suspended. You three. can't step on someone and not get suspended. But so what? Look at what Sabonis did before that. Yes, but Sabonis doesn't have a history of doing things that he shouldn't be doing and getting suspended. But, does that but should that matter? I mean, if it's yes, you know, yes, 16 it should. Or whatever, sure, but no, it's on any given play, everyone should be judged the same history or not. Uh, that is just flat out incorrect. Why? Because if you have a history of doing that kind of things. The thought that it may have just happened in the moment goes completely out the window. If you have a history and a record of having dirty plays, then you're more likely to get suspended, and you are deserving of getting suspended. Okay, I guess that's fair, but also, I it was a it was a dirty play by Sabonis. Um, but also, considering ultimately, of- ultimately, what happened with Draymond could have ended up costing the Warriors game too. Uh, so, I think that the Warriors have reason to be frustrated. I think both teams, though, probably think that they should be up 3-1. to one. I mean, Game 1 and Game 4, both just down to the wire, missing threes for the win type of games. Um, well, yes, missing, yes, but one of them is very different. Missing a three for the win after a foul should have been called is very different than missing, a th- missing two threes and just missing. I'm not saying the, that Miss Ca- like Charlie, I'm not Charlie, saying that Miss Calls didn't happen in game two. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is if the league flat out admits that the game result was probably incorrect, then that's not a good look on both the league and the team that shouldn't have won in the first place. The Warriors had their fair share of calls go against them in the early games of the series. Yes, they did, and I'm not suggesting that they didn't. What I'm suggesting is that none of those calls had a game happen to had an event happen to them that the NBA is trying to admit. Yeah, we messed up. That shouldn't have happened. That that that's fair. Um, and I'm see, looking forward to the last three games of the series. Deer and Fox, as of taping, is listed as doubtful for Game Five. That could really really hurt the Kings. Um, the Warriors need to find a way to do something that they've been awful at all season, go on the road and win a game. Yeah, and then the other question that I have is even if they make it out of the series, who do they play? Probably the Lakers. I like their odds. And can they win? 
I like their odds against the Lakers. They get four at home. Warriors have but, Warriors can beat any team in the league at home right now. Any team in the league at home. But then the problem, the problem with this that we're forgetting, is if the Warriors win, which I don't even know if they'll beat the Kings. If they do, they'll play the they Lakers, won't. which they will probably beat in probably seven games. Yeah, sure. And then they have to enough. face the Nuggets, and they're going to get annihilated. They don't have to face the Nuggets. They have to face the Suns. Well, we'll see. I, whoever whoever wins that Suns-Nuggets series is going to come out of the West. Can we just talk for a moment, Charlie, about how beautiful it would be to have a KD versus Steph Western Conference Finals? That would be amazing, and I really hope that happens. Oh, so you are rooting for the Warriors this round. I am. I am, I don't want to, but now the fact that you've said that makes me think, I don't really care who wins the Suns Warriors series because I think whoever wins that will have a great series against the Lakers. And the great thing about me is in the NBA, I don't really care because Seattle doesn't have a team, so I don't really support anyone necessarily. So I just want to see the playoffs be good. I want to see for the Trailblazers games. or something. No. Oh, if man. I want to root for a disorganization team, I'll root for the Texans. Or no, or you could keep rooting for the Thunder since they left. Or I could just root. Well, see, here's the thing: I would root for Portland's basketball team, who's dysfunctional. But I could just root for the whole city. You don't root for the Timbers, do you? No, of course I don't. Okay, thank goodness. Um, Speaking of dysfunctional, the A's are probably moving to Las Vegas. Uh yes. Um, what are your what are your thoughts on that? Because they just they just if you don't know, bought land for a stadium um, in Vegas. Um, what are your thoughts on that franchise? My thought is that they should just pack up their bags and become a minor league affiliate. <laughs> See, this is why this I, I'm campaigning right now. We need a relegation system in the MLB. And Do it's we? kind of ironic considering that I know that my team, the Mariners, would probably be like six leagues down at this point. Oh, sure. Obviously. But but I do no, think we need a relegation system. We call up the best AAA team and downgrade the best, the worst MLB team. All right. No, you, so with, with the A's, um, they're, it's, it's not that they're dysfunctional. It's, it's that their owners do not, they do not care about putting together a winning baseball team. They do not care at all about the city of Oakland, which is set to now lose its third sports franchise in the last five-ish years. Um, they care about making money, and that's about it. The A's have a legit fan base. They do. But why would that fan base watch the games, come to the games, when they have to come and watch a team that has 20, 21 games into the season, a negative 100 run differential. Um, why would well, they're they tied at eight right now. Why would they watch that? Again, and not to mention, at by far the worst stadium in the league. It's a disgrace to sports, that stadium. And why, why should it be on the city? To do to build them a new stadium for a franchise that doesn't care, right? The owners, if they if the city builds them a new stadium, the owners are just gonna they're gonna continue to be cheap. They're never gonna have a quality team because that's the Oakland A's uh, owners situation. And it's not like they're a poor franchise. They make they pull in millions and millions and millions of dollars every year to come in last place over and over again. And frankly, if I'm an A's fan, I'm I'm not going to another team. I'm not given another dollar to I that. don't blame you. I'm, I mean, there is no reason to do it. They have they have betrayed the city of Oakland. It is it is disgusting. Um before we wrap up, let's, let's give an update on the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, a 
pretty good postseason uh, there as well uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, let's start with the let's start with that Avs Kraken series that we were talking about earlier, Charlie. Yeah, the Avalanche currently have a two one lead over the Kraken. Game four is still underway. About twelve minutes left to go. That game is still tied at two. The Kraken have had chances to win both of these game, both of the games they lost, and they haven't gotten it done. Correct. Um, I honestly, I, I don't know if they've looked like the better team, but it's been really close. Um, the series deserves to be tied to two to two after four games. I'll put it that way. It does. We'll um, see. Um. Uh, and yeah, obviously, obviously, you'll know the result of this when this episode comes out. Um. Just also these, these in, series in the NHL have been amazing. The Oilers and Kings, I think, in their four games have gone to overtime three times. Yeah, no, it's no, there's there is nothing like playoff hockey, especially playoff overtime. Um, it's the way it works is amazing. Um, yeah, that great Oilers battle series, between like New Jersey said, and New York with the Rangers and Devils. That's a great series. Carolina's series looking good against the Islanders. Toronto's looking uh, good against the Lightning, which is rather surprising. Uh, and so Boston more comeback doesn't seem wins to be having any Leafs. problems with Florida. What? More comeback wins for the Leafs. Another one today. They scored. They were down three entering the third period. Scored three. Sent it to overtime. Scored an overtime. Unbelievable comeback once again for the Leafs. Um, yeah, Golden Knights definitely look like they're about to win that series. Um, Boston. Little, I was a little curious to see what they do entering the postseason. Um, they've looked just as dominant as during the regular season. Um, I don't remember who I have winning, but I said that Boston wouldn't go, do well. So yeah, I think you did. Um, Hurricanes looking like they're gonna deal with the Islanders. Uh, yeah, you mentioned Oilers Kings, and then Stars Wild, another great series. That one also tied up two games apiece at the time of taping this. So. Great, great series all around in the NHL. Um, do we have anything else, Charlie? Nope, and I think we're out of time. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, thanks for thanks for listening to the CNC Talks podcast. Uh, if you liked it, uh, make sure that you subscribe because uh, we have episodes coming out every single Wednesday wherever you listen to your podcasts: YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever. Um, also available on our website, cctalks.net, which also has everything that you need to know about the show. Uh, you can also call us with questions at 360-389-2630. Again, that's 360-389-2630. And follow us on the uh, remains of Twitter um, at CC Talks Podcast. For our producer, Morris, production designer, Zach, and our proof editor, Drake, I'm Colin. And I'm Charlie. See you next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>